Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. So I thought it would be a really awesome idea if me and my friend here, Corinne, Hi. Say hello, would talk about abuse and how to know if you are in an abusive relationship. So that's our topic for today, right? Yeah, yeah. And I picked her because she is, well, pretty much in the same situation I'm in and it'd be nice to get that, that perspective. So, how do you know if you're in an abusive relationship? How do you know? You know? Uh, I think most of us are in denial about it. Yeah. And it, when you reach out to people who really do love you, mm -hmm. they will tell you, hey, snap out of it. You're in an abusive relationship. And that's why I wanted to be a part of this because it's really important that if you know anybody who's in an unhealthy relationship, they, that you reach out to them. Yeah, I think so. I think having that support system is so important because so many women, like I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't know there was a way out. I thought, oh, I'm just going to be stuck here in this, you know, abusive relationship forever. And that was that. And I just made my peace with it and I just kept going, you know. And you become, like we talked about this, you become a zombie. You just don't. You know, think there's anything better out there for you and that you're just going to have to suffer through it or stay. A lot of women stay for their children. And I mm -hmm. did that, too. You know, I stayed for my kids. I thought, you know, my kids, they need that father figure. But the mistake a lot of women make is that they expose their children to that. And I'm, I did that myself, you know, and some of the signs of abuse. Well, first, I think we get signals, you know, like with me, I got signals. There were a lot of signals, but I was missing every signal, you know, and I think in the beginning of a relationship, you're so in love, you're so enamored, and you're so like, you I don't know, things. you overlook it, like you're blind, you know, like they say love is blind, and really, yeah. I was blind, you know, I was, I was thinking, oh, he's just looking out for me, he really loves me, he's, he cares for me. And he doesn't want me to do that because he cares for me. He's trying to protect me, right? But that protection it's turns control. into, it is a control, but it's a mask. It's a kind of a masqueraded control, you know? It's not a full-on control yet. Mm -hmm. So the first signal is, like I said, you get signals. And then the next thing, you get flags. You know, have yeah. lots of those. Yeah. <laughs> lots of flags. Like, personally, for my relationship, you know, I had a lot of flags in the beginning, like, you know, he would tell me, don't talk to that friend, don't hang out with that friend, uh, you know, and he wouldn't even give me, like, reasons why that were, like, you know, good reasons. It was, like, because I don't like her or whatever. He'd make anything up, you know. Right. And so he would, like, implant that in your head thinking, okay, he's making my friend look bad. Maybe he's right, you know. So, again, flags, I miss them all. And other flags I would get from my friends, like, one of my friends in particular said, don't, don't hook up with this guy because he's going to put a basket over you and he's going to trap you and you're never going to get out of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I was like, oh, whatever. She, you don't know what you're talking about. He's so awesome and everything. And I was so blind. And sure enough, that is what happened. So, you know, I mean, if I could talk to that friend again and tell her, hey, you know, you were so right about that whole situation and I just totally ignored it, you know? Yeah, and I thought... I was in kind of denial. I, I was, I ignored things, but I also was like, well, I can handle it. I yeah. got this. I can yeah. handle it. Yeah. And yeah. it's not a situation that you can handle because it's not a matter of someone being able to handle it mm -hmm. because it's the abuser's <coughs> problem. And you yes. can't yeah. change them. And they, they, make, they make us believe that it's our fault. You know, that's the thing. Oh, yes. It's your fault that you got me upset. It's your fault that yeah. you... You know, you aggravated me, and this is why I, I hit you, or I yelled at you, or I called your name. You know, but it's not. It's not our fault. It's the, their learned behavior. That's what that is. You know, they learned that behavior, and I can. And they're always, responsible for their actions. Exactly. Not us. And I think a lot of that, like I said, it's it's a lot of stuff they see from their own families too. You know, like I'm from Europe, and in Europe, men are brought up to treat their women with a lot of disrespect and you know that we're their property and we're not we're not your property we're nobody's property you know we have our own brains god gave us our own brain so we can decipher and and you know make decisions for ourselves mm -hmm. so yeah but that was the flag you know my friends were like no don't hang out with them and of course i fell for that trap and here I am, 12 years later. It took me 12 years to get out. Yeah, it took me five years. It took you five. So see, <laughs> you were smarter. You left sooner. 
<laughs> it took me a while, but you know, and I think another thing was that they um, make you believe like you're in charge. That was the biggest thing for me. Like they make you in the beginning, they make you feel like you're in control and you can you're the one that's got it all, you know? Mhm. Mm like before I came to America, he had me believe that I'm going to come here and I'm going to work and maybe have a salon and all of this jazz. And I got to America and that didn't happen. <laughs> Yeah, no. He was like, you're going to be a stay-at-home wife, and yep. that's pretty much what I what I was for the last 12 years. And um, Same. Yeah, you know, and it's like, what happened to our dreams and our goals? They just whoosh, flew out the window. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what happened. Yeah. Every they time I would try to get a job, even if it wasn't, like, amazing job, if I was yeah. just like, I just need to work, we need the money, I need to get yeah. a job, he would find a reason why I couldn't do that. Yeah, because he didn't want you leaving his control, you yeah. know, control uh, barrier. I was like, I'll be a waitress. And he was like, no, you're going to have guys hitting on you all the oh, time. Oh, yeah, exactly. No, I don't want you Everywhere doing pedicures on dudes or whatever. It's like, what? Yeah, the, but they make you feel like you're in control in the beginning until you they get you. And then it's like slowly that becomes, you know, a fact of like, um, you know, like mine, he knew that I was an esthetician and I was doing nails and I had a salon and I had gel nails at the time and I wore them for eight years straight. And when I got to his house, uh, he told me, well, take that gel off your nails. I'll show you how to grow your own natural nails. But he made it sound like um, he's looking out for me, like he's looking out for my health. So I took them off, you know, and I did as he said. And sure enough, yes, my nails, my natural nails did grow. But... That was a part of the control from the beginning, you know what I mean? And I didn't see it. I one was like, signs. oh, yeah, it was one of the signs. And then slowly he would tell me, well, don't put this gel in your hair or don't um, don't wear that makeup because it makes you look trashy and hoary. And wait, can we say that on YouTube? <laughs> I think we can. Um, you know, so there was a lot of that control, like don't do this. And the biggest one was, you know, if you're going to be with me, I want you to be a vegetarian. And. For a lot of you that don't know me, I was a vegetarian for 12 years, you know, while I was in that marriage. And uh, I didn't really have much of a choice. Like he basically said, um, you can't cook meat in my house in a pan, so <laughs> you have to decide what you want to do. But he didn't really give me that option, you know. Well, what am I going to do if I want to eat meat? Can't you take me out to a restaurant? He didn't even give me that option. So it was very imposed on me, you know, and I was like, I felt like I was kind of out of choices. and. Again, I was so enamored. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, he cares about my health. And then I just said, okay, fine. And it was hard, a hard adjustment, you know, especially that first year because I remember my mom's good cooking, her cabbage rolls and all that yummy stuff mm -hmm. for the holidays. So it was hard, you know, but I obviously I got used to it over the years and, and I didn't eat meat at all for 12 years, you know, until I left. <laughs> and I was in the shelter and then you know, slowly introduce meat into my diet because I realized, hey, I can't be a vegetarian when there is no option to be a vegetarian because I'm not cooking this food, you know? Right. So that's, yeah, that was a big thing, you know? Control. It was control, yeah. And then, and then what happens after that control? I think isolation, you know, is also definitely, a huge, huge definitely. thing. Definitely, definitely. Isolation. Don't be friends with this person. Yep. They're <clears throat> always starting a problem mm -hmm. you find a friend or you are social and then there's always a made up a problem Make, yeah. makes a problem about yeah. it yeah and and for me too it was like he isolated me from my family you definitely know, big time and I wasn't allowed to talk to them this is before like fancy you know phones <laughs> so we just had like basic phone and I like, couldn't talk to them and if I did talk to them they had to be on speakerphone so there was a lot of that, you know, and he had to know where I was going and I wasn't even allowed to go anywhere. Yeah, there you know, was no it was going. like there wasn't going anywhere by myself. It was always we were together all the time, all the time. constantly, nonstop. And it's like it got so overbearing. It's like, dude, I need to catch my breath, like, you know, but isolation was huge for me because I got to America and I had nobody. And it was my friends were his friends. Yep. And you then know? when we leave. I tried to make friends of my own, but it was like it was so short lived, you know, because he would find some reason to yeah. kind of scoot him out of my life really quick. Yeah. And it was like, well, okay, I can't even have a friend. And the ones he had, you know, I was like worried about, you know, what if, what if I say the wrong thing, you know? 
So yeah, isolation was huge for me. It, and it, it really does wear out on you because if you don't have someone that you can talk to, it becomes yes. really, really depressing. And you know, and I, I know because I was there. I didn't have anybody and I couldn't call my family either. What would I say yeah. to them? Hey, mom and dad, I failed. Can I come back? You know, I mean, they wanted me to come back, but it was, I, I didn't want to be a failure basically. But yeah, isolation, you know, and do you feel like that Definitely. that was a huge thing for you? Like, did he stop you from talking to your family? Yes, it yeah. made problems about everything. Yeah, about like it. little things. He would blow them up into this big, Anytime crazy thing. I wanted to like, reach out I like it was not okay for me to ever talk to anybody about yeah. our relationship yes that was a big thing for me too like don't say anything to anyone about me about my family yes. <laughs> nothing and, and it would he would blow up be emotionally yeah. irrational and yeah you're talking crap about me you're making you're gonna turn everybody and yeah. it becomes unhealthy because yeah. you need to be able to talk to somebody exactly and didn't you find yourself like trying to defend him to your family uh, that happened to me like I had to defend him to my family mm -hmm. to my friends oh uh, I'm sorry he behaved like that you know he's he had a bad day or you know some stupid garbage like that well, well, I just said, oh, because, he's just yeah. being a you know he's being a jerk and he just doesn't want to see me you know in a good place he treats me like garbage I should have said that from the beginning but we make excuses you know well yeah that is a, it is admitting like it, there's there's shame a, a feeling of shame like yeah. how, how did I get myself in this situation you know and we don't want to admit it and but that's a huge thing for me it's, it's so important to identify when you need help and ask for help yeah yeah and a lot of us don't know about that I didn't know about that help until 12 years later <laughs> Right. You know, and, and, you know, when I did enter my first shelter, like, they give you these power wheels, and it talks about all of the, the ways that you could be controlled and power and control, and I didn't even know all this until I started reading. Like, for example, you know, um, uh, intimi obviously intimidation was a huge thing, oh, right? Yes. Oh, Inti yes. Oh, my, I felt intimidated all the time, and I felt, like, terrorized to the point, you know, whereas I, I was afraid to say anything or do anything because I didn't know how that was going to pan out and you know he might just explode and that wasn't mm -hmm. good um, but you know he would make me afraid too of using looks that was a big thing and it says that in here you yes, know making looks. her afraid of using looks actions gestures smashing things that was a big thing for me yes. too. destroying her property that yep my property phone, your phone mine was my jewelry <laughs> and all kinds of other stuff um uh abusing pets um I can't really say that because he never abused pets, but um, displaying weapons, yes, that was huge. <laughs> we had like samurai swords displayed all over the place, <laughs> so that was one of the one of the power and control things that was going on mm. in, in my life too. Um, and there's also emotional abuse, which happened to me too, and it it does start like that, you know. The emotional abuse is huge. Yeah, so there's all different kinds no. of abuse that I, I wasn't aware of. Like, there's financial abuse. Yes. And that, I was part of that. I always had to ask for money. I always yeah. had to, you know, he, you know, some people, they say they give you an allowance. Yes. I didn't do that because he wasn't yeah. that organized, but. Yeah. No, I didn't even get an allowance. No, I, I had <laughs> to ask. I had to go through him for I everything. Didn't, I didn't even have to ask because he wouldn't give me, like, he if he gave me $5, then he would take it back, like, in the next five minutes. <laughs> you know, he would make me. Um, write all of the deposits and all the money that would come in our house on a budget book. But I didn't have access to any of that. It was mm -hmm. all in his ba bank account. You know, he had two cards for that bank account. But do you think he ever let me go to the physically to the bank account and withdraw money? No. Yeah. So I didn't have, you know, any money I to like. Well, how was I gonna run away? Yep. I had no money. I did. I couldn't drive because he t he made me believe that. Uh, I can't drive because I don't have my, my citizenship or or I didn't have uh, ID or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. all kinds of stupid excuses that I now find out. It's like, no, no, no. Yeah. You can't drive here. <laughs> you know, and all of these. You can't leave. You, can't uh, you can have a kids, bank account. He would say. Yeah. I'll call. Like, you'll be arrested. Yes. You can't take my kids away. That's kidnapping. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of that yeah. kind of emotional emotional threats like that, you know, like, I'll deport you and I'll take the kids away, you'll never see them, mm -hmm. you know, you'll never see your family or I'll bury you in the desert, no one will ever find you, that kind of, that was the scariest for me, you know, and like I said, isolation was huge, you know, controlling what we do, that was huge, that, 
that was big for me too. He controlled a lot of what I did, you know, who I Definitely. saw and who I talked to, you know, and the what ones you wear, what you wear exactly, you know, using jealousy to justify the actions, oh. you know, that it's like oh, I'm jealous. Well, <laughs> but yeah, see, but the uh, economic abuse is here too on this wheel. Yeah, um, yeah. He would tell me, Look, you smile too much. You. You yeah. can't tell I, you know, like to be funny and I would make yeah. jokes, make people yeah. laugh. Just I'm a good clown. Yeah. Yeah. And he'd be like, you need to Dude, stop. Yeah, you need to be serious. You're yeah. a serious woman. You're a mother. Yeah, and people <laughs> think that, you know, people think you're flirting with them. Yeah. You know, you, Who's that guy you're lying? What does that guy want? <laughs> that happened to me too. It's like, what? Well, what am I supposed to like? Literally, it's like they wipe away who you are. They wipe Absolutely. away the person and the... the <clears throat> The personality that you have, you can say goodbye to that when you're in an abusive rela relationship because they erase that and they yes. implant their ideas and their their values and their religious beliefs and their you know beliefs in general in in you and then you start kind of like adopting this new thing that he's teaching you and you start to become like that. You know, it's like for me, like he knew I was very bubbly and very, you know, and, and always happy, always smiling. Yes. And then, you know, over the years, and I became like the zombie and like I had to put on a face and Miserable. a different mask. Just a shell of a person. Yeah, we were a shell of a person, you know, and you, you guys know in my videos from my other channel, I literally kind of had to put on a different face and just pretend that everything was okay. But I knew deep inside that things were not all right, you know, and a lot of times... I made videos only because that was the only thing that kept me going yeah. and doing what I love to do even though, you, you know, many of you don't know, I wasn't getting paid for any of those videos because all the revenue money that was coming through that went to his bank account, you know, so I never saw one penny from that account. And there were times where he would make me, he would force me to make, you know, a video every day just so that we could get money because that was our only income, you know, when we traveled in Europe. Mm -hmm. And it was, it put a strain on me because I didn't, I stopped enjoying making videos. And yeah, I could tell with my videos, you know, when I was in Romania, they just were not the quality that I, I was used to and that I love to do. And so that just became, you know, a thing of a chore. It didn't, wasn't exciting and fun, you know. I couldn't mm -hmm. say what I wanted to say on my videos. I had to be very limited. And it, it was really hard. But, um... Um, this was another huge thing too, male privilege, uh, mm -hmm. treating her like a servant, making all of the big decisions, um, acting like the master of the castle, mm -hmm. <laughs> being the one to define men's and women's roles. And this was so huge in my relationship, you know, like he made it clear from the beginning that he's the head of the family and we had to all listen to him. And it didn't matter my opinion, like basically I was only a sounding board. But he would still make all the big decisions, you know, mm -hmm. like I didn't have a choice whether I wanted to go to Japan or not or whether I wanted to go, you know, spend a whole lot of money traveling around the world. I didn't have that choice. And when I did express that choice, he would get angry and irate and like would, you know, get physical. And I'm like, OK, nah, all right, just go do whatever you think you need to because you're in charge. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, and I tried to just not you know, escalate things, and I would just keep my thoughts and my emotions in my head and let him pursue with his power and control. But that was huge. Um, also here on this wheel is using children, mm -hmm. making her feel guilty about the children, using the children to relay messages, using visitation. This is more like after you divorce and <laughs> you got visitation stuff. But, but he would use the children a lot, you know. I think he would... Like I said, you would say, I'm going to take the children away. You're never going to see them, that kind of thing. And that really messed with me a lot because that was one of the reasons that kept me trapped and not wanting to Same. get out, you know, Same. because I feared losing my children when, I mean, they're my babies, you know. Um, also, minimizing and denying and blaming, making light of the abuse and not taking her, her concerns about it seriously that was also big too, you know, like he would minimize like whenever he would hit me or get mad at me or explode, he would make it be like, oh, well, it's your fault because you pissed me off and this is what happens because you didn't listen yeah. and, you know, you, you did this and you did that. You put the bag on the garbage can yeah. wrong. He would say, yeah, mm -hmm. you, 
You taunt me into doing that. You yes. make me it's do your that. Fault. Yes. You make me act that way. You want me. Yeah. You you know, you push my buttons yeah. on purpose because you want me yeah. to lose control. Yeah. Shifting responsibility for abusive behavior. Exactly, which is what you just said. You mm -hmm. know, he would shift his responsibility for acting the way he did to you. Like yeah. it's your fault that I'm behaving this way. <laughs> you know, that we caused it and it's it's crazy, but there's a lot of women that need a lot of help. So, you know, like I said, abuse comes in many forms, and it can be, like I've said in the other video, too, it can be physical, emotional, religious, sexual, um, you know, financial, like you said. And that was a huge thing for me, too. Like, I didn't have money. Where was I going to go with two little kids, you know? I didn't know anybody. I had no friends. I had nobody to turn to. I felt trapped and lost, and I didn't know that there was a way out. I didn't know I had all these rights, you know, basic human rights. And um, exactly, there. That's it's sad, you know, and I know that a lot of women out there are going through what me and Corinne have been going through, and many women, you know, many women um, that are in our situation didn't know that these kind of places exist that can help you get ahead and help you to finally break free from that chain, you know. Give you support. And give you support. Education, like, yeah. yeah. You know all the resources that you yeah. need help you get a job help you be independent help you yeah. take care of your kids you know mm -hmm. help you get some daycares help you yeah. start to to find a job yeah, and get, get employment yeah. find, get help get your own housing mm -hmm. get yeah. protection if you need it yeah um, all of that is it's all out there and it's yeah. all available it's as easy as the hardest part is doing it yes it's it all is. there that is the part hardest part is to decide whether to leave and start fresh, even though you know it's going to be hard and, and you don't know what's going to come around the corner, but like making that first step is the biggest, biggest thing. And that was the biggest thing for me, you know, like making that decision and having that right support, you know, yes. like for me, I didn't have any friends. I couldn't talk to my family because he forbid me. So my only escape was going on games <laughs> on my phone. And through that is where I found someone that told me, hey, you know, you have rights. You can't just let him tell you that you, you don't have any rights here and you, this is what you're going to do. And he told me that how to get out and, and I found out about shelters from him. You know, like I didn't know about shelters. And you know, you always think that they're like these terrible, awful, yes. awful, awful places. Yeah, like it's a big giant room with like thousands of beds, kids running around with snots everywhere and noise and there's no privacy. And it's totally not like that. I mean, shelters that I've been to have, you, you have your own room, your own bathroom, your own little space. And uh, you have all these support groups that help you to get ahead and to realize, hey, you are in an abusive relationship. It's time for you to get out and how to do it. Mm -hmm. They have so much support. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, support yeah. groups. They mm -hmm. have do yeah. domestic and, violence support groups. Yeah, and talking to other women who have gone through this, you know, it doesn't make you feel so alone it and isolated, awesome. you know. It, it does make you feel good because you're like, hey, someone else is going through what I'm going through. Yeah, and you're like, wow. Or even worse. Wow. So. so hopefully somebody out there yeah. is watching and saying, hey, what? That sounds exactly like That's me. what I'm going through. Yeah. <laughs> How do I get out? You know, yeah. It's as easy but, as a Google search. Yes, it is. And yep. I mean, what happened just so like, I think it would be good to touch on like what happens. You can call the police. That's the first step. Call the police. Yes. And they will come. <clears throat> they will either get you medical attention and arrest him depending mm -hmm. on what's going on yeah. or at the least make him leave yes and then they and then you are you had so your window yes that is your window and you go you to take, escape you, yeah you can with your life they'll you'll you get domestic like you can find a domestic yes. violence hotline yes there's and yeah it's yeah. called dv stop and you can find that out all on on google guys i mean i didn't know about all this stuff you know but no. now that i'm in the system and i know it's like wow and okay. it's great. They say it's you amazing. just give them your information. Mm -hmm. they, you say this is what happened. He's gone now. Yes. I need to leave now. Help. And they